Okay, in this video, I'd like to show you how to prove that the electric and magnetic fields of an electromagnetic wave are perpendicular in propagation, or direction, we'll say. So the first thing I'd like to describe is the wave number. The wave number is defined as k is equal to 2 pi over lambda. And if you've asked yourself, where does that come from? I think the answer is that when people started studying waves, initially I think it was with sound waves at least, that they found that a particular factor kept propping up, and the factor was 2 pi over lambda. And it propped up so many times they call it k because it made it easier. And they also found thereafter that k had a physical significance. k gives you the direction of propagation. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do now is try and work out why the electric field is perpendicular to the, to the k vector. Okay, so I'm going to define the electric field is equal to the initial amplitude E0 times the complex exponential of the wave number dot producted with the displacement vector minus omega t, omega being the angular frequency. The next thing we do is realize, of course, that this vector is the same thing as e sub x in the i hat direction, plus e sub y in the j hat direction, plus e sub z in the k hat direction, like so. And if we apply similar logic to the k hat vector, or excuse me, the k vector, not the k hat vector, there are two different things, the wave number vector will find that k sub x in the i hat direction, plus k sub y in the j hat direction, plus k sub z in the k hat direction. So k sub y in the j hat plus k sub z in the k hat is equal to the wave number, or the wave number vector. So if we compute the dot product uh, we, of the nabla vector with the electric field. Now why would we want to do that? Well, because Gauss's law for electricity states that the del operator dot product with the electric field is equal to zero. That is Gauss's law for electricity, one of Maxwell's equations. Now just to remind you that this operator, this upside down triangle, is equal to del del x plus del del y plus del del z. And it's very straightforward. You multiply the components in each of the unit vector directions with each other. So for example, I'll multiply del del x, which is the i component, with the, uh, with the x component of my uh, electric field. All right? Or how about this, actually, I'll say that again. I'll just multiply del del x times this, I'll add to it del del y times this, and I'll add to it del del z of this. Okay, so you multiply this times each of the components of your electric field. And you'll get the following as a result of that. You get a very simple relation stating that e sub x times k sub x plus e sub y times k sub y plus e sub z times k sub z is equal to zero. All right, that's very important. You should not no notice this now, right? E sub z times k sub x, or excuse me, e sub x times k sub x, e sub y, k sub y, and e sub z, k sub z, are all added together to get zero. So I'm just going to note that in the back of our heads. And now we'll continue on to look at the magnetic fields. Once again, I'll define the magnetic field vector as the initial amplitude, B0, times the complex exponential of the wave number, cross product with the displacement vector, negative the angular frequency times the time. Of course, this is equal to b sub x in the i hat direction, plus b sub y in the j hat direction, plus b sub k, or b sub, um, b sub z in the k hat direction. Now we need to look at Gauss's law for magnetism. Gauss's law for magnetism states that the, the del operator cross-producted with the electric field is equal to negative del b del t. That's Gauss's law for magnetism. And what that means is that the negative time rate of change of the magnetic field is equivalent to the cross product of the del operator with the electric field. So what we need to do now is to compute these two, uh, these two components. So the first thing to do is get the time rate of change of the magnetic field. That's pretty straightforward. You're just going to get ddt of this. Notice, of course, we're talking in three dimensions because this vector here, r is equal to its it, r i hat plus or j hat plus or k hat. All right, it's in three dimensions. So it's, it, it, we're going to have three components as a result of that. And notice where the, the time component here of our magnetic field is, it's negative omega t. So when we, when we get the time rate of change, we're going to get the exponential and times the, times the derivative of our argument, and that's going to be iota times negative omega, okay? So let's go ahead and do that, and we'll find that negative del b del t is equal to the following. It's equal to negative iota omega 
e sub x in the i hat direction. Negative iota omega b sub y in the j hat direction. Negative iota omega b sub uh, b sub z in the k hat direction. All right, that's pretty straightforward stuff. If you just take a moment to look at it, you'll see that it makes perfect sense. The next thing we need to do is compute the cross product of the Nabla operator or the Dell operator with the electric field. So I'd like to remind you how to do a cross product. So what we're going to do is, because we're operating in three dimensions, we need our three unit vectors, i hat, j hat, and k hat. Next thing is we draw the three components of our Nabla operator. So it's going to be del del x, del del y, del del z. Then we draw the three components of our electric field because they're next. So it's going to be e sub x, e sub y, e sub z. And we compute the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix. It's going to, be, it's going to have three components. And how we do this is we, comp we, compo excuse me, we compute the three determinants in the three unit vector directions. So to do the i hat vector direction, you block out all the rows and columns going through i hat. To do the j hat, you do the same thing. You block out all the rows and columns going through the j hat. And for the k hat, you block out all the rows and columns going through the k hat. The remaining 2 by 2 matrix in each case, you, mul you, uh, you compute the determinant. So for i hat, you block out these two rows, and the, or these, these rows and columns, and you compute the determinant, AD, negative BC. Then you, for the j hat, you go this direction, and it's AD minus BC. It's negative j hat, by the way. And then it's block out these two for the k hat, and it's AD minus BC. Alright, so that's just a small bit of linear algebra. Something from, from, I suppose, first year college. So the answer we get as a result of this is going to be the following. It's going to be equal to del EZ del Y negative del EY del Z I hat negative del E uh, del EZ del X negative del EX del Z J hat positive del EY del X negative del EX del Y in the k hat direction. Now the thing is if you actually compute what each one of these partial derivatives are you'll get something new. Notice we're getting the y, uh, the y derivative or del del y of e sub z. Okay so what would that look like? So e sub z might, looks like, might look something like this. Alright, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the del del y of this. Okay? And you might say to yourself, hold up a sec, this has got no y component. And you'd be wrong, because look, k is equal to k sub x i hat plus k sub y j hat plus the same thing in the k in the in the excuse me, k sub y in the j hat plus the same thing in the k hat direction. So there is a component in this in the y hat direction. And similarly each one of these would fit something like that as well, where whereby we'll actually be getting a derivative because we have a k vector there as well. So if you compute all of these you're going to get an equivalent expression stating that e sub z times k sub y minus e sub y times k sub z in the i hat direction minus e sub z times k sub x minus e sub x times k sub z in the j hat direction and we're going to have a positive and we're going to have another expression and to be honest I'm not going to write it in because it's just going to be too long. It's just the derivatives here. And if you look at what we've written down, you, you'd realize, I suppose, if you've done a small bit of computing uh, cross products, that this is also equal to e cross k. That's what, this, that's what this is. So now e cross k is equal to grad cross e, like so. And that's going to be equal to negative del b del t. They're all the same. Is there anything else we know? There is absolutely something else we know. We know that this here, e cross k, uh, we kn no, we don't know anything about e cross k, excuse me. We know that we know something about e dot, d dot k. Or, right, one sec there now. So this is going to be the k vector there. All right, so we can see, we can see this. All right, so the other relationships we can make are as follows. We can say this component here, is equal to this component here, all right? Because that, that's what our formula basically told us. So let's write that out explicitly. So we're going to have negative iota times omega times b sub x 
is equal to this component here, e sub z times k sub y, negative e sub y, k sub z. Oh, sorry, you couldn't see it there. Alright, so let's do the other ones. We're going to have negative iota times omega times b sub y is equal to e sub, negative e sub z, k sub x, positive e sub x, k sub z. And also the component which I didn't put in the last time, the negative iota times omega times b sub z is equal to e sub y, k sub x, negative e sub x, k sub y. Alright? And what we'll find out as a result of that is that e cross k is equal to omega times b. e cross k is equal to omega times b. Because if you look at this, this is also, uh, this is, or excuse me, this here, this is the dot product of omega and b. Okay? <laughs> you might be saying, oh, it's like we're getting lost here. If you, yes, this is, if you look at it, just, just take a moment to look at it, you'll find that this is the dot product, or excuse me, these here are the dot product of omega times b. Because look, we have omega times the x component, omega times the x component, and omega times the x component. Okay? So we're getting very close to the end now, and I'm going to rub out these because we don't really need them anymore. Just take the result. Okay, the result we had there was that k cross e is equal to omega b. And we also know, of course, that e is perpendicular to k. And we know that negative del b del t is equal to the, the cross product of the, the ve Nabla vector times e. So what we conclude, conclude as a result of that is that E is perpendicular to B, that B is perpendicular to K, and as we know already, that E is perpendicular to K. Alright? And that's how you prove that. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.